So you're stuck indoors for a while because of a global pandemic, you say? Also, I'm Nikki Limo. If you've never been here before, please like this video if you like it, if it's helpful. It really helps my channel out, and it also lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. Last year on YouTube, I did a video that was like 30 days of bullet journaling, my experience, and I wasn't sure how long I was going to keep it up, honestly. It can be very time consuming. I wasn't sure if it was for me. After doing it for a year and a third of a year now, it was very specific. I can say that it's totally for me and it's totally for everyone because it can literally be as fancy and as artsy and creative or as minimal and efficient and organized as you want it to be. It's completely up to the user. It's completely up to your mood of the day. And I just wanted to help other people explore that if it's something that would help them. I feel like the majority of the videos that I've really liked on my channel so far are ones that have helped people through things that have helped me. And I want to continue that. It's really helped me out a lot, like with my anxiety, with my depression, with creativity, with time management. Um, so many, so many, so many ways has it helped me, and um, I've shared a little bit on IG stories and a little bit on YouTube, but not the full extent. Originally, I just wanted to try a bullet journal out because it seemed like a good way to combine my planner that I was really loving and my daily journal, which I'd been doing for 15 years, into one book. It's completely exceeded all of my expectations of what a bullet journal would be about, and I'm really happy with it. So here we go. Let's flip through these pages and I'll just talk about what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and shed some light on things that you might be wondering about if you're considering starting a bullet journal. Here we go. Okay, hi. So, oh my god. Why? Wait, wait, wait. Let me try it again. Okay. Okay. Jesus. All right. So I've never filmed from this angle before. Hopefully I did my setup okay and everybody can see things. Let's start from the very beginning. So this was my first bullet journal that I ever started. I think the, the hardest part about starting something new is the starting part of it. So I started with the original journal that the original bullet journal creator had. Ryder Carroll is the original bullet journal creator and he used the Loish term 1917 A5 dotted notebook. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, uh, but that's like the type of bullet journal that he started with. I'll get into the pros and cons of different journals soon, but let's just start with what we started with. This sticker came later. It was after I started making my own stickers. It says, make love to the present, fuck the past. Probably shouldn't have used a clear background, but hey, we live and we learn. The first thing you'll find in here is fuck perfect. Because like I said earlier, I get really obsessed with things and the more bullet journal videos I watched, the more everything looks so perfect. And so I really wanted to keep this mantra of fuck perfect. This is just a safe place for us to explore our feelings, our creativity, and all our vulnerable shit that we're not gonna get into right now, but we'll get into soon. This is um, an index page, and the original bullet journal he, uh, kept like a, a tight index page. I didn't really care for this or need this. It was just like the same spreads over and over and over again. And I just, if I needed to find it, you can find it. Some people like this if you're using it for a variety of like a thousand different things. If you have like a lot of spreads, then maybe this is important to you. It wasn't to me, let's move on. I came across a bunch of different spreads that people had to start their bullet journals with and a bucket list seemed to be a popular thing to start with. So I made one of those. I'm gonna blur it out because I don't really Really like people to see bucket list items before I do them but maybe I'll share them one day after I check some of them off I also had a YouTube video ideas list um, I had a oh this continued uh, should they don't tell you is our podcast so I had ideas topic ideas for that this was a merch line that I had going at the time unfortunately the jewelry company that I was working with for kittens and coffee went out of business or they sold their business or something they didn't even tell me they just like stopped responding to email so uh, yeah uh, it's looking for a new home but um, right now we put a pin in it this is a blank page that I added later and this is actually one of the most helpful things that I made which is um, a looking ahead type of page, like a future index, I think is what it might be called, where um, 
let's say you someone's like, hey, are you busy in March? And it's January, and you're like, I don't fucking know. You put <laughs> you could put the event down under March and remember that you had something going on or, or planned that day. So if someone's like, come to a birthday party on the 9th of March, you're like, all right, bro, I got you. And you write it down here. And then when you're doing the monthly spreads, which I'll get to, you can reference this as like, oh yeah, fucking Kevin's got a birthday. So that was really, really helpful. I really wanted to make my spreads as simple as possible starting up, um, starting out so I didn't get overwhelmed by it because if something's just like too complicated, I'm not gonna be consistent with it. So this was my first um, monthly calendar spread and it was very simple, very efficient. At a glance, you can see what was going on that month. I went to, wow, I traveled to Tulum and to Costa Rica. What a freaking jet setter I was in 2018. Dude, I started my bullet journal in the middle of the week on a Wednesday in the middle of November. So you really can start anytime you want to. Journal entries and weekly planning is what I wanted to utilize a bullet journal for. So this is an outline of both of those things. Also, my bullet journal is not usually this thick. I paper clipped some pages together because I didn't really want people to see my journal entries. It normally lays a lot flatter than this. This is what my weekly spread typically looks like, and I didn't stray very far from this very first weekly planner spread. I borrowed this concept completely from uh, my old planner that I was telling you about earlier. This was like the same exact spread. This is what I was using up until this point. And then in between the weeks, I have journal entries, so these were both journal entries. I covered this one with a thing. I played around with having to-do lists on the actual journal entry so that I am reminded of what to do because sometimes when I'm starting out a journal entry, I'm just overwhelmed by like all the tasks I have to do. And then, excuse me, just my online shopping coming in. I really started this with the idea of play, like playing around with um, things and like combining all of my notebooks because I did have a separate notebook that I was using for like shopping lists. I was like, let's just combine it all into one. So I did do my Christmas shopping list in here. That worked out great. Journal entries. I put some photos in here. I had just gotten a photo printer for Black Friday and um, I wanted to test out the quality. So I just put them in there. It's kind of like a scrapbook of everything that's going on at this point in my life. Here's some Christmas cocktails that I came up with. I eventually did a Thirsty Thursday video of these drinks if you want to check them out. I didn't really like the way this turned out, but I liked being able to play. Moving on, I liked these things where at the end of the month I would do my achievements, big or small, because I tend to have a really big problem at recognizing things I've accomplished. like. All I see usually are just shortcomings and failures and things that I didn't get done in the month and that was really toxic and unhealthy. So I started a new pattern, new healthy habits of writing down achievements. So we look, we paid our taxes in November. <laughs> Oh my God, what is wrong with us? No, it's an achievement. Stop judging us. We paid our taxes in November. Um, I found an editor apparently, we booked a trip to Costa Rica. Okay, cool. So we did like, these were things that I typically would forget that I did because they were just like, oh, I gotta get this done. And then I just would do them and not recognize that I had done something. So I, uh, yeah, I got in the habit of writing them down and that was super helpful for me. Then I did this thing called, called moments, like monthly moments where I printed out little snapshots of um, things that happened that month, pictures that were in my phone of things that, uh, that we did. Like I had my birthday party, so there's like birthday party pictures. I am a sentimental ass hoe and I really just like looking back at pictures and moments and everything that was going on at that point in my life. Anyway, so this was the first time I experimented with doing like a theme for the month. And since it was Christmas, why not do a Christmas theme? I liked this idea of having like the month here with the theme and then like a quote here. Um, really deep quotes, I go super deep. And then I did this page, which is a monthly goals page, which I kept. I kept a lot of my original spreads, surprisingly. And I think they're, like the things that I kept, they're, they're really efficient for me for tracking things and improving my production, effectiveness, my mental health, all of that good juicy stuff. So um, these were my December goals. I had them separated into categories. The categories have changed um, over the months and years, but uh, the like 
the things, the separation uh, has stayed the same. Also, this habit tracker is the first time I started this habit tracker, and I was super hesitant to start a habit tracker because as a recovering perfectionist, I didn't want these blank spaces to make me sad like that I didn't do them. Um, so I got out of that mindset and instead had the mindset of observing. Like let's just see which one of these daily habits we actually do daily because these are all things that I want to do daily, that I think I do daily, but do I do them daily? And then from there, instead of like beating ourselves up for not meditating every day or not taking our vitamins, I guess we were really bad at that this month. Um, instead, you make adjustments the next month, like, okay, this month I'm just gonna really focus and make sure that I take my vitamins every day, or like I'll give extra attention to meditating every day. And that's how I've operated with this habit tracker and I really, really, really like it and appreciate it. It helps me feel a lot more balanced because sometimes I, in the past, I didn't even know what was wrong or like what was making me so inconsistent. So this was like, a, this was a really, really good way of doing that. Changed my freaky life, highly recommend. Oh, and if you can't tell like how it's done, it's, these are the different areas and then you write uh, the dates along the top. So this is one through 31 of, those are the days of the month. And then you just fill in little boxes of which ones you did. I also operate really well on a reward system, so it gave me immense joy to fill in the boxes that I did do that day. Um, and there's no day that I didn't do any boxes, so that's, yay, we succeeded in that. Moving on, um, again, the, the spread kind of just stays the same, but since we were in themes, I played around with different colors, had the red and green theme going, had like, oh, look at this little Christmas decoration down here, wow. Some days, if I felt like drawing, you know, I this really opened up creativity that way because I didn't realize how much I missed drawing. Like I hadn't really been doing any creative things just for me um, until this point. I think working in a creative field, you um, you think you're just you're being creative all the time. So why would you do anything outside of that that's creative? But um, things like this were just like it's just for me. Well, now it's for you too, but. It was originally intended to be just for me, so there you go. I also played around with having like a cute thing around the date that fit the theme. This originally happened just because I did something on one of the pages where it bled through to the other side, and so this was a way to like hide the bleed through, and then I really liked it, so I just kept going with it. Drawing got me out of my head a lot, so I did a lot of like drawing back then when I first started bullet journaling, uh, also practicing my hand lettering. This was a different spread that I tried to do at the end of 2018, which was like summing up in visual form things that I did during the year that meant a lot to me. Here's a list of what worked and what didn't in 2018. I intended on putting my favorite pictures of the year, uh, my favorite overall moments on this side, but that never happened, we were not gonna talk about it. Basically, I was doing all the things that I usually do at the end of a month, I was doing it for the end of the year. Then I also did the monthly achievements and monthly moments. Oh my God, I'm so cute. This is my first time starting a new year theme. I operate by a color code of personal numerology, if you follow me. I'm a weirdo, okay? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, quick sidebar. Okay, so I originally got the system from a book called Colors and Numbers by Louise Hay. It's not something that I am like religious about. It's just something to think about. I like reminders and I like things that are personal, so it worked for me. Anyway, the way that you find your personal number for this specific system is you take your birthday, the month, and the day. Mine is 1102. And you add up all those individual digits. So one plus one plus zero plus two equals four. You would add these up until they came to a single digit number. Now this is different from a life path number, which I've read other numerology articles about. My life path number is one because it incorporates my birth year, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. Let's just talk about this number. Your month plus your day, narrow it down to a single digit number. And you're gonna take that number and we're gonna take the, the year that it is. Well, so this year is 2020. So this is the universal year. And we're gonna add those numbers up. Two plus zero plus two plus zero equals Four. Oh my god. So to find out what the year 2020 is for me personally, I would add up these numbers. Four plus four equals eight. This year 2020 is oh, an eight year for me. Eight is represented by either pink, brown, or beige. 
and it also stands for success. Primarily financially, but it can also mean success in other forms depending on how you interpret it. Because see, every number has a coordinating color and something that it represents. But I'm not gonna go over super hard right now because we got a whole ass video to cover, but highly recommend reading the book if you're interested in that sort of thing. Maybe I'll do a full video on it. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. So for me, 2019 was a purple transformation year. That was the overall vibe for the year. These were diff goals in different areas that I had for 2019. I like that, that page. This is when I try to do new spreads for the year. I really liked this one, which was like one word to focus on each month. I just picked words that resonated with me at that time and like came back to them during the month. I'm kind of woo woo in that way if you haven't gotten that idea already. These were trackers, like growth trackers that I had seen and always cringed at because like, what if you don't grow? <laughs> Which is like, what happened to me? I mean, this was my fear and this is what happened. Like originally I was like, but what if I don't grow and it's stagnant the whole time? Then I was like, well, why are you manifesting not growing? And then I was like, you're right. So I made the chart and then like, I just flatlined. I did not grow. I don't even know if anyone's finding this video because YouTube hates me so much, like the algorithm. It like hate like despises me. Yeah, so I didn't really want to continue this spread uh, But we'll get to that. So then it was January and January was a pink month for me a pink success month in a transformation year So I did pink crystals. That was me practicing lettering to do with the theme. I liked it kept the goals have a tracker it was a pretty solid month of doing my day daily habits. I got a little fancier with the spread, with the monthly spread. Uh, added some like drawings of crystals. Throughout the progression of my monthly spreads and uh, just little designs and doodles, I never pressured myself to make it super creative. It's always been like a, like draw if you want to. Like no pressure on making this super artsy and creative. This is like, this should be just for you. I think a lot of people when they when they are torn between starting a bullet journal, they compare themselves a lot to like people's bullet journals online. And I think if you just like just think of it for be, as being for you and like get inspired but don't like com compare yourself. Welcome to my TED Talk. Thanks for coming. So I started making my weekly spreads to go with the the color of the month, so I like filled in this bottom part. Oh yeah, by the way, the way my weekly spreads work is each day is like a, a column. I have it split into thirds. This row is morning and then this is afternoon, and then this is evening. This side, the to-do lists have been separated into life and work. This was an, another thing I just needed to get out of my head was just like, okay, what do I want my schedule to be like? When you're a freelancer, you don't keep track of your own schedule. Like you don't have a boss telling you like what to do. So if you don't keep track of your own schedule, like you'll never get anything done. I had some stand-up bits that I was writing uh, that I eventually did write and perform later. So I started doing these things in my journal entries this month where I just did like a, a quote. I don't know. I was getting really freaking aesthetic here. I also like to do this thing for new moons and full moons. Every month there's going to be a new moon where you can set new intentions for yourself. Just like take a look at your life. It's really just a reminder to pause and be like, what do I want right now in my life? And then I list those out and then you just like do a little meditation on it and then bam. I think it's really important to continually be refocusing if you're goal oriented and you like really, um, want to stay on track. That's just been helpful for me. Oh, this is when I first got into making my own stickers. If you noticed in my weekly spreads, I use stickers and previously they had all been stickers that I purchased, but then I was watching tutorials on how you can make your own stickers and I made a video on it. If you want to check it out, you can like check it out or right here. I'll put a card to it or whatever. But yeah, it's surprisingly very easy to make your own stickers and you can draw them yourself and then you can print them out. And I got so excited and I got into a super mega sticker phase and I haven't made stickers at all this year, but I, I miss it. I really miss it. I love stickers so much. Like it makes my brain happy. It's like a silly thing. It's like a silly thing that makes your brain go from like serious, like, oh my God, I'm so stressed out and overwhelmed, but you're like, you're playing with stickers. So it's like not that bad, right? And so that every month there's also a full moon and full moons are a really good reminder to let go of things, like let go of things that no longer serve you. Take a fucking good look at yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. You're doing this thing and it's not helping us. And uh, work on letting that go. Okay, another weekly spreads. And then, oh yeah, I got really depressed at the end of January and it lasted for an era in 2019. But one thing that I felt like helped me was just doing, taking time 
out of my day. Are you freaking out? Like, what are you, are you just don't want to see depression? I feel very stigmatized. I feel very alienated camera. It did help me um, to just take like an hour out of my day to express myself through hand lettering, which was like the new, my new hobby that I was into at that time was actually really helpful and therapeutic. Another week this point, I started incorporating my own stickers and I'm super proud of those. I really like them, I still use them. Yeah, here's all my stickers that I made that month. So then I continued the January achievements um, and the moments. These were pictures that I fully intended on cutting out and gluing into the page. And I did not, but those were moments that happened, so at least I have those memories. I tried to do one of these January favorites spreads, kind of like how I did at the end of 2019. I visually like showed things that I really liked, but uh, this was the only month I did this. This is a lot of work, it was too much work. February happened, and February for me was a ni number nine, number nine pastel letting go month. So make love to the present, fuck the past. That is a Sage Francis quote that I thought perfectly fit the theme of letting go. I stopped keeping track of my habits that month, and you know what, that's okay, because I was dealing with mental health issues, and that's fine. Again, this is just for you. Like it's no one's looking at this. It's not homework you have to turn in. People put so much pressure on themselves for these bullet journals. Like once I started like really getting to the bullet journal community, people are like kind of kind of too crazy. Like don't use it to be crazy. Use it to like express yourself and like use it therapeutically, but don't like use it to make life harder on yourself. Jesus, everyone. These are all stickers that I made for the month, and I like them. Yeah, I said it. Here's my monthly spread. I like doing these like little, those are cute. Again, hand lettering to therapeutically express myself. And then it was March. And March was a red number one month, which was new beginnings. Shout out to Amanda Rachley, cause I totally got inspired by one of her spreads for this. Did some goals, did some habit tracker stuff did a new calendar spread, new moon intentions. I'm telling you, like all of these exercises that I consistently did in my bullet journal, they're borderline cheesy. I get it, I'm self-aware, but they really truly did help. And so if it, I, I would just say, keep an open mind, try some of them out. If it works for you, cool. If it doesn't, hey, you tried something and that's, that's good for you. Good on you for trying something. I tried some meal plans. I was really trying to figure out some health issues at this time. Now there's a fair amount of pages left here, but not enough to do a whole new month. So I just kind of used it as practice pages for lettering and pen tests to see like what the color looked like on an actual page of paper and um, testing out like different month spreads that I didn't know if I wanted to commit to yet. I also liked, um, I like that these have an envelope in the back. You can keep little mementos from the year or from, you know, this, I guess it was like six months. I keep them all in that notebook and then everything that happened to me during this era of time is all in this one notebook. That being said, because I combined three separate notebooks. It ended up taking me about three or four journals per year. That's kind of what I was using anyway when they were all separate, so it still works for me. Moving on, how much time you got? I'm gonna flip through the entire year and take what you want, and leave the rest. If this is interesting to you, I mean, by all means, keep going. This one's the next one. Again, a Lois Term A5 dotted notebook with some stickers that I had done. Still a reminder. 2019 continues. So I continued this future spread because like I said, I really liked this. Um, I really liked seeing at a glance what my next few months were gonna look like. And when people started planning things in the future, I could always like see that. And when I was doing the monthly spreads, I could easily pull from these. This is one of my most helpful spreads. If I was gonna tell anybody to utilize any of these, it would be this one. So at this point to avoid getting repetitive, I'm just gonna flip through these pages and then stop on anything that I feel is new information or want to talk about. So here we go, really fast flip through now. Oh, I kind of found it helpful to use color coding. So um, the things I highlighted in orange were things that we had to record and the things that I highlighted in yellow were thing events that I had to go to. Oh, and then at the bottom I had like my upload schedule. So videos that I was uploading that day and I kept, I kept that system going. Oh, this was kind of helpful to just like write down little notes of what I was reading at that time or watching. This 
this spread, a lot of you had asked me to do a plan with me video or start doing plan with me videos. And although I don't want to do consistent plan with me videos, I did do a plan with me video for this specific month of last year. So if you're interested in that, how I set my pages up, what everything means, all of that in detail, you can go check that out. I'll put a card right here for you to look at it. These are some stickers that I did for Halloween. Oh, August, I didn't even write achievements or memories. It just, just blank. But the good intentions were there, I swear. Um, these were notes that I took for a workshop that I attended. Again, I just wanted to give an example of how you don't have to make everything aesthetic. It could just, it could really just be for efficiency um, and uh, not to judge yourself. Getting into the final journal of 2019. I know this video is like forever long and I apologize, but hopefully it's helping some of you just get ideas and just like maybe it's meditative or calming. Um, hopefully I put some dope meditative calming music to it with maybe like a, a lo-fi hip hop beat. I don't know. One thing I did want to say though is this was the first time I was using something that was not a Loish term 1917 dotted notebook. Um, this is actually a, an A5 dotted notebook from Scribbles That Matter, which is a different company. What I like about it is the pages are much thicker, so there's not any bleed through. You can't see the writing from the other side like you can on the Loish term notebooks. You can see like a lot of the writing from the other side, which always bothered me. Also, the pages are a lot whiter, which in my opinion makes the colors a lot more vibrant when I'm looking, when I'm flipping through it, which is just nicer on my eyeballs. I was also able to do this in watercolor with no problem, like no rippling of the page at all, no bleed through, no soaking, no nothing. This was a an excellent journal, excellent quality paper for doing a variety of aesthetics on, on top of it. Marker, pen, watercolor, stickers. One drawback that I did have was that the Loish term is almost twice as many pages as the Scribbles That Matter. So the Scribbles That Matter have Let's see, 100, 157 pages. The Loish term have 200, 250 pages. So you can essentially fit way more months in the Loish term than you can in the Scribbles That Matter. So it just depends if you want more aesthetic or if you want uh, more efficient. And I don't know, I always vary between the two because I can't make up my mind ever, but here we go, last journal. <laughs> This I just laughed out loud because the end of October and all of November last year, it got so insane, like so much madness that this, <laughs> these were my journal entries. This got, yeah, everything got too nuts. Everything got nuts. I didn't even do a goal page for November. I just, this was all I, I got. This is, <laughs> this was all I could manage. No habit tracker, nada. This was a great week. And then that was it. That was it for 2019. I decided to start a fresh notebook for the new year. And I'm just gonna show you my current journal just so you can see how I have things set up on a daily basis. And then also uh, really quickly show you what I kept from the first year I did of bullet journaling and what things I kind of left in the dust. If it helps any of you. Stop, can you focus? Oh my God. Okay, it's pink because it's a pink number eight success year this year. So I got a pink notebook to start. Scribbles that matter. Also, this is a pen holder that didn't come with a notebook. I just put it on every current bullet journal notebook. So I always have my pens with me because that can be annoying to like lug around if you're traveling. Um, these are the pens that I use on a daily basis. This is what I use for my journal entries. I bought um, a refillable pen. So I just refill the ink because I write so damn much that I just was sick of buying packages of pens. I go over them a lot more in my 30 day experiment with a bullet journal, but that's where I keep them. I also have all of my stickers that I use. Oh, and some pictures for all the stickers that I use like regularly when I'm planning my weekly schedule. Easy access. Started the year off with this 2020 spread, my favorite spread. These are my January achievements. I just kept it super simple. You can kind of guess the colors of the, the months were at this point. And that's it. Uh, 
overall, I really like bullet journaling. I really think it's super helpful to have a place where you spend some self-reflection time. It's vastly accelerated my self-improvement, which is something that I always strive for. And for those of you who don't know me, I've struggled with mental health issues since I was about nine years old and I spent a lot of time alone. And I I really think that bullet journaling has helped a lot. It's been super, super therapeutic. It's been like a safe place to put thoughts and put schedule and like organize my brain in a way that I find creative as well. So if you like this video, please give it a like. That was my personal experience with bullet journaling. Again, I don't really do bullet journaling videos consistently, but sometimes I do post to my Instagram stories so you can check me out there. Hope that was helpful to some of you out there that needed it. For the rest of you, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of this. You can also check out my vlog channel, youtube.com slash Nikki. I sometimes um, show bullet journaling on that channel just candidly. There's that and I hope that you are having a good quarantine and we'll make it through this. Or we, or we won't, and but we won't together. Hey, that's, isn't that great? That's great. Goodbye. <laughs>